these sheets are from a uh, old uh, series called uh, uh, Conceptual Physics uh, by Paul Hewitt, and they're uh, they're actually pretty nice for talking through uh, the main ideas behind these and showing you a couple of new things that I want you to know about uh, circuits. So starting with the first one, uh, diving in here, it says, hey, the circuit shown on the right has a voltage of six volts. Uh, and so you can see I've got my battery here, right? Providing six volts. Uh, pushes charge through a single resistor of two ohms. Uh, and it says, according to Ohm's law, the current in the resistor and therefore in the whole circuit is. But they want to find the current in the resistor. So they want to know how much charge is flowing uh, through this guy. So the way I'm going to do that, of course, is with Ohm's law. Delta V is IR. That is the most important formula for simple circuit problems and when you'll be using again and again and again in your analyses. So looking at this, anytime I see a delta V, you say you should be asking yourself, hey, uh, that's the change between what two positions? And so what I'm saying is if I were to hook up uh, a voltmeter here and I would hook it up like this, right? I'd be looking at the change in voltage from one side of the resistor to the other side right um and uh and then i'd be looking at the current flowing between from that point to that point and the resistance in between those two points that's the way you use ohm's law so in this case you say well gosh to use this formula i gotta know two variables to know the third first do i know the delta v well here's the way you think about delta v what i do is i like to first of all i like to color code right i like to go ahead and highlight uh parts of my circuit for their V level for their amount of electric potential. So here I'm going to say that high V side of the battery, we're going to say, I'm going to color code that voltage purple. Now I'm going to go tracing out that same color. All of this is at the same potential, the same V value. And you say, I'll trace out that color until I hit something that changes the potential. Uh, those things would be a battery, a resistor, or a charged capacitor. Um, a battery, you say it's going to pump energy into the charges. So there'll be a change of potential from one side to the other. That's a battery's job. A resistor takes energy out of the charges. And you remember that uh, when we talk about energy, electrical potential energy, you say, I remember that the formula, what electric potential is, it's the electric potential energy per charge. As charges go through a resistor, they're going to be dumping off energy. They're going to be bumping into those molecules, or sorry, those atoms in the wire, um, making them wiggle and jiggle faster, right? As they bump into those atoms in the wire, they're going to bump them, make them go faster, which is going to be random motion. It's going to be thermal energy. And so those electrons are transferring some energy to those particles in the wire as they're moving through. And so they have less energy when they get out to the other side. <clears throat> Um, so since there's a delta V, there's going to be a change in potential when I get to the other side. And so I'm going to go ahead and shade the low V side of the battery. We'll, say, we'll shade that in red. You see, well, look, all of this is metal. It's all conductor connected. It's all at the same V until I get to a battery resistor or a charge capacitor. And so I can see all. So look, from red to purple here, you say, gosh, that is a change in V going up six. Well, I'm going to go from purple down to red. I'm going to go back down six. The delta V for this guy is, in fact, six volts. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about the plus or the minus here. I'm just going to say, oh, six volts is the, the, the magnitude of the delta V. There's going to be some current going through it, and it's going to have a resistance of two between those two points here. And so you say, if I do the calculation, I can see that my I must be three. So my current is three amps. Moving on, uh, shown the circuit to the left, voltage is six volts. So once again, it's a six volt battery, but this, and so I still have my high V side here. Whoops, I just changed color when I didn't want to. My high V side here of the battery. And so all of, all of this is going to be at the V level of that side of the battery. And then I still have the low V side of the battery. There's still going to be six volts between red and purple. But if you look, you see, I'm going to go down potential going from purple through this resistor. But then look, I'm going to hit some in-between level. I go down some more and then I'll be at red. So there's kind of a level in between. Um, what do you think? Should we make that green? Sure. 
So we'll shade this in green. So the potential here in between. So it's going to go down 6 volts, but it's going to do it in two steps, from purple to green and then from green to red to get down to 6 volts. So take a look at this. It says, I know that 6 volts uh, must push charge to that total resistance of. You say, well, I could use my uh, resistors in series formula. I know that when resistors are in series, my res total resistance for in series is just going to be the sum of all of the R's. So in this case, it's going to be 3 plus 3. And so my total resistance is going to be 6 ohms. The current in the circuit then, you say, well, again, we'll use delta V as IR. And I know that <coughs> if I hooked up a meter, you say, one thing you'll notice is from red to purple, you say, gosh, I'm going to go up 6 volts. Well, V is a property of a location. So if I go up 6 volts and I run through and I end up back where I started, I better go down 6 volts. So I go up 6 volts here. I better go down 6 volts while I'm going around to get back to that starting point. So if I end up back where I begin, if I go ahead and I try to calculate, that is a delta V, and I do that over a closed path, right? dot dr and it's a closed path then you say that it better equal zero that's Kirchhoff's loop law if i go around the loop end up back where i started the change of potential is zero i'm back at my starting point and that comes from the definition of potential energy we said to have a source of potential energy the force that goes with it has to be a conservative force and that means the work done by it over a closed path is zero so my change of potential energy is zero if I end up back where I started. Uh, so moving on, on, you say going along this 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 path, right? Going all the way around, I better go down six volts. So you say six volts is a current through a total resistance we just figured out was six. And you say, hey, that I must be one amp then, right? Six is one times six, right? And good enough. Notice that if I went and I now, and I just calculated, my delta V here and my delta V here, right? You say, look, I now know I have a current of one amp coming out from the battery through that circuit. That's what we just calculated. And if I have one amp flowing through three ohms, delta V is IR, one times three is, I will have a delta V of three volts from here to here. And then likewise here, I'm going to have that one amp of current, it comes in one side, goes out the other side of the resistor. You can't create or destroy charges. So whatever my current was going into the resistor, that's my current coming out the other side. One amp. I have one amp through three ohms again. So again, my delta V here, delta V is I times R. One times three is going to be three volts. You say, look, I go down three volts, down three more. I've gone down six volts. That works. Up six through the battery, down six through the circuit. M moving on. What if I had four, or sorry, three four ohm resistors in series? You say, well, I would just go ahead. I'd say my total resistance is four plus four plus four, right? And so you say that's going to be 12 ohms. This takes us to this problem. Here we have two circuits, right? Circuit A, circuit B, and they're identical, all identical bulbs, six light bulbs, all the same, right? Notice this side has a four and a half volt battery. This side has a four and a half volt battery everything's the same except in the circuit b here they've connected a wire across here from one side to the other and that's going to have a huge effect on how this circuit operates they tell you here that the only difference is bulb 5 has a short circuit what's a short circuit it's a shortcut for the charges flowing in the circuit to get from one point to another point so let's see what effect that has First, I might go ahead and mark my V levels, my potentials in color here. Again, we'll go ahead and we'll say that the high V side we'll say um, is in purple. And so I say, hey, here's the high V side of that battery, the long line. I'm going to track, 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 track till I hit something that's going to put energy in or take energy out. Now, light bulbs, they are resistors. They're little skinny wires. It's very difficult for charge to get through. And the charge trying to wiggle their way through the, through the wire there. Uh, slams into those atoms in the metal and makes the filament glow. It gets so hot that it glows, dumping off energy there. So I'm going to lose energy going through the bulb. I'll be at a different energy per charge level on the other side of the bulb. Uh, let's say we'll make that kind of a pale blue. Sounds good. Now I go through another one, lose some more energy. Let's make that a yellow. 
And now I dump some more energy. Now I'm here. And look, I'm linked to the low V side of the battery. This is all the same potential. Let's mark our low potential as red. So charges flowing through the circuit are going to drop down voltage in one, two, three steps to drop down that four and a half volt. Let's go over to the other circuit now. Again, we have our high V side of the battery. We're going to color code that in purple. And all this until I hit something that's going to take energy out of the charges or pump energy in, like this light bulb, uh, be at the same V level. All right. Now I'm going to go this and at the low V side over here. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Let's say going to low V side. Let's color code that in red as usual. You say all of this is going to be at the same potential until I hit that light bulb, right? But look at what's going to happen here. In the middle, you say, see all this? But wait, this wire is connecting. So all of this, it's all one big piece of uh, conductor all connected. It's all this is at one V level. And so the effect that's going to have here, uh, first of all, what would happen if I put a voltmeter and I hooked it up here from one side to the other side of bulb five? You say, what would the, the delta V be? You say, well, for that spot, my delta V, uh, first of all, you look and you say, it's all the same V level. So the change in potential is zero from one side to the other side of that bulb. And you say, no, wait a minute. If I apply Ohm's law, delta V is IR. From one side to the other side of that light bulb, you say, I'm going to have zero is the current times the resistance of that bulb, right? And you say, no, wait, the resistance of that bulb isn't zero, which means that I has to be zero. And if you think about it, you say, hey, what pushes the charges through the circuit anyway, right? Isn't it an E field? And you say, I remember that my delta V is negative integral E dot dr. You say, if I have no delta V, right? Like from one side to the other side of this guy's no delta V, then there's going to be no E, right? So, or better yet, think about it this way. If I was going to send charges to a light bulb, they would dump off energy in the bulb, wouldn't they? And so charges from one side to the other side, there'd be a change in energy in the charges. And if the change in the energy per charge, there would have to be, right? There'd have to be a delta V, but there's no delta V. It's the same energy per charge on both sides. We must not be losing any energy in the bulb, which means nothing is going through the bulb. And that's the way to think about that. So by short circuiting it, I provide a shortcut for the charges to get from here to here where they don't have to go through that light bulb. And so since I provided a path here that has no resistance effectively, then I've provided a way for that charge to flow. Charge will tend to go, um, you say, this is saying that people have, that um, the current seeks out the path of least resistance. Well, that's not really true. It's not like all the current goes to the low resistance path and nothing goes to the high resistance path. Um, the deal is it's going to be proportional to how much resistance there is. If there's a lot of resistance, you'll have a little current in, a little resistance, you'll have a lot of current in, but it kind of splits. But in this case, the choice is between some resistance and zero resistance, or effectively zero here. And so then it will all go through the zero resistance path. And so this light bulb won't have any current running through it, through bulb five. Okay, take a look at this. Um, in which circuit is the current greater? Well, if bulb five doesn't have any current going through it, then it, effectively it's as if it's been removed from the circuit. And so I just have two light bulbs. Now, these are in series, and so... Here, I'm going to add the resistance of bulb four, the resistance of bulb five, right, to get the total resistance over here. But on the left circuit, in circuit A, I've got three bulbs in series that I'm going to be adding the resistances of. So over here, if I just called the resistance of a bulb R, this one had, because the bulbs are all the same in this problem, I would have three R would be my resistance, right? But over here, I only have two R. Like I said, nothing flows through this bulb, so it's not affecting the flow, right? It doesn't have any... Uh, any resistance that is contributing to the circuit. And so I just have two R resistance here. Now they have this, these two circuits, they have the same voltage, same delta V from red to uh, purple to red, right? Of going down four and a half volts, four and a half volts, purple to red. And so through, they've got different resistances, they'll have different currents. So doing delta V is IR, right? 
you recognize that um, this one having a bigger R, same delta Vs, this one's got the bigger R, it would have a smaller current through the left circuit. So I have the greater current in the right circuit in circuit B. Now it asks this question, in which circuit are the bulbs equally bright? So I want to talk about brightness of light bulbs. This is something else I need you to learn here, something new I want to point out, and that is how bright a light bulb is. Doesn't that have to do with how much light it's putting out per second? How quickly it's pumping out energy? Well, then that means we're talking about power, okay? So when we talk about brightness, I want you to think about doing a power calculation, all right? That is something to recognize. And so I really want to ask, in which circuit are the three bulbs have the same power rating? You're like, well, gosh, power. I remember that there's actually like three different ways we can write it. I first derived it as P is I delta V. And then you can say, well, I can also use Ohm's law and rewrite that as I squared R by substituting in and saying delta V is IR. So it's an I times IR. I can also uh, do a version. Here's I and delta V doesn't have R. I and R doesn't have delta V. I can do a version that doesn't have I, um, and that would be by substituting in delta V is IR. So I is delta V over R. So put that in delta V over R times delta V. I'd have delta V squared over R. So which of these power formulas would I like to use? Well, since um, I've just verified that these bulbs all have the same resistance, each one, right? But we just figured out that there'll be more current flowing in the right branch. That means these bulbs have more current running through them. So I'm going to use this one here that's got I and R because R is constant for both, for all the bulbs. But if they've got more current going through them, they're going to have more power. They'll be brighter. And so four and six are actually the brightest bulbs because they have more current running through them than these two. Which bulb's the dimmest? Well, obviously, that's going to be bulb five because it's out. It got short circuited, right? There's a shortcut. Car charges are running around, uh, going bypassing it. And so it is, in fact, out. It's not getting any, uh, it has no power at all, no, no energy per second leaving it. Uh, which bulbs have the largest voltage drops across them? Well, in both circuits, we're going down four and a half volts. But you see the left circuit, it's going to go down uh, one drop from purple to blue, second drop from uh, blue to yellow, and third drop from yellow to red. It's going to go in three steps, one, two, three down. This one only has two steps, purple to green and green to red. So going down four and a half volts in two steps, those are bigger steps. You know what I mean? So looks like bulbs four and six have the largest potential drops or voltage drops across them. Now this next bit is trickier. Which circuit is going to dissipate more power? So now I'm not looking at individual bulbs. I'm thinking about the circuit as a whole. And so I'm going to say, well, let's try using the I delta V argument, right? And think about how much power is being used in, uh, how quickly we're, we're converting energy into heat in the two circuits. And so if we use the current times the voltage, I'm picking that one because both circuits as a whole have the same delta V, don't they? Right? And so it's a constant. So then to see what effect on power is, I just think about I. Hey, we just figured out before that the circuit on the right has a bigger current, doesn't it? And so because it's less resistance. So it's got a bigger current, same delta V, so the right circuit will have bigger power. Now think about what that means. That means over here, I only have two bulbs, right? But this circuit with just two bulbs ends up putting out more energy per second, more light per light than this left circuit that has three bulbs. Why? Because it, these guys have more current going through them. And do you see that the current is squared in that power formula? So they end up pumping out like just way more energy um, in this circuit on the right. Um, when if it has more power, it also produces more light. If you want to see something a little more um, quantitative with this, we could go ahead and do this in a little bit more quantitative fashion if you wanted. Um, what I might do is I might go ahead and talk about individual bulbs and their power ratings, right? So um, take a look here. Because these two bulbs, 
this four and six are identical, right? Then we're going down voltage in two steps. They'll be equal steps. So each of these bulbs, if I hooked up my little voltmeter and I connected to the two sides, it would read half of four and a half volts. 2.25 volts would be my delta V there. And 2.25 volts would be my delta V there. And so together, I'm going to go down that four and a half volts. Over here, I'm going to go down in three steps. And because they're equal resistances, it's going to be going down in equal steps. Four and a half volts in three equal steps. Each one of these is going to have a delta V of 1.5 volts. 1.5 volts. If I hooked up my voltmeter, 1.5 volts. Why do I feel like it would be easier? If I want to talk about individual bulbs, then actually let's do delta V squared over R, of course. What am I saying? Delta Vs, we just figured out the delta Vs for the bulbs. We know the Rs, so let's do this one. So looking at the left circuit, you say, what's the power in the left circuit? Well, each of those light bulbs has a delta V of 1.5 squared over its resistance. I'm just going to call the resistance R. And then I'm going to lose some, I'm going to, then I'm going to power pumped out in the next bulb, 1.5 squared over R, and then the next bulb, 1.5 volts squared over R, right? Which, if you're looking about that, I'm just going to call it 3 halves squared, which is going to be 9 fourths, and 9 fourths, and 9 fourths. That would be 27 fourths, uh, yeah, 27 fourths uh, over R, okay? That is the power of the left circuit, right? What about the right circuit? Well, the right circuit, I'm going to add up all my delta V squareds over R, so you say it's going to be 2.25 volts, uh, 2.25, you know what that is? That's nine fourths. And so you'd say, gosh, I'm going to have uh, power is delta V squared over R. So it's going to be nine fourths squared over R plus another nine fourths squared over R. When you do that, nine fourths squared, that's 81 sixteenths plus another 81 sixteenths, that's 162 sixteenths over R. That's the power of circuit B. So let's compare these. 162 sixteenths to 27 fourths. And so you say, well, 162 sixteenths, that would be like uh, 81 eighths. What about this one? 27 fourths, you know, let's multiply by two over two. That would be 54 eighths. So the ratio of the powers are 54 to 81. Did you see how I did that? 54 to 81. And do you know what 54 to 81 is? It's a 2 to 3 ratio. Okay. So interestingly, right, you say the circuit on the right ends up pumping out 150 or 1.5 times, right, 3 to 2 ratio, or 50% uh, more energy than the bulb on the left, than the circuit on the left, even though it has one less bulb. So these two bulbs, they're really working overtime to make up for uh, not having this bulb there, but they like kind of more than make up for it. And we're going to be pumping out more energy per second. This battery on the right would actually drain faster. I'd be taking more energy per second out from that one than this one. It would drain out faster. That's one effect having the short circuit would have. Plus, this bulb doesn't light at all. Plus, if I'm pumping more energy per second through right? I'm getting a bigger current than I should, than I would normally over here, right? If this bulb burns out or is, uh, if I skip past this uh, bulb, what I'm saying with a short circuit, it's going to draw more current through this, through these bulbs than it should be before. Maybe that'd be too much current. It'll burn out those bulbs or cause other problems. Um, having a short circuit is generally bad news. Stuff doesn't work that's supposed to work and other things get too much current um, and can cause them to fail. So you want to avoid uh, making a link uh, that sh provides shortcuts to get through the circuit. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the parallel circuits part of this sheet. And so you say, all right, first of all, we have, here we have a parallel circuit. They say, I've got a battery here. I see it's six volts. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, run our current um, out of the battery. And say it comes out here and then the current gets to this spot in the circuit. And you say, hey, right there, right, there's this point, right, where the wire splits. And so some of the current will take go out through this wire, 
and head that way. And so it will continue on this way and go around that way. And so at this point, it's like each little charge has a choice of which path to take. And so we say these two branches, they are in parallel to each other, we say, because there's two different ways to get from this spot to this spot, right? My charges can choose to go through the top two ohm resistor or through the middle uh, bottom here, two ohm resistor to get to this point over here. So we say that those two paths are in parallel. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what this does uh, via color coding, uh, thinking about the V value. Okay. And so you say, if I go ahead, use my uh, purple marker, go ahead and call this the high V side, right? Sorry, purple highlighter. Say, so call this the high V side of the circuit. All of this, look at this, all of this and all of this, it's all conductor connected to that high V side of the battery with um, no resistors to take energy out in here, no batteries pump energy in, no charge capacitors to make a delta V. So it's all the same V value. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and mark our low V side of our circuit. Uh, over here, low V side of the battery, we're gonna tag that in red. And look, all of this is all one big piece of conductor, right? And so it's all the same V value too. You say, look, to get from purple to red, you see down here, I know that red up to purple is six volts. So purple down to red better be six volts, better be six volts. So that is my delta V, right? From anywhere in purple to anywhere in red, I've got to go down six volts. So if I want to find the current through one of these resistors, you say, well, I'm going to use Ohm's law, right? And so that's going to be a delta V is IR. You say, well, gosh, if I want to, I got to know two variables to solve for the third. We just figured out that each of those resistors has a delta V of six volts, anywhere in purple, anywhere in red. So it's a delta V six volts here to here, right? Anywhere in purple, anywhere in red. And so doing delta V is IR, my delta V is six volts. Taking a look at that top resistor, it'll be my current times a resistance of two ohms. And so the current is going to be, three amps. I'm going to have the same setup down here for this one. I'm going to go through six volts through a resistance of two ohms gives me a current of three amps. So we just figured out that the current is going to be three amps flowing this way to go through the top resistor and three amps down here going this way that are going to go through this bottom resistor. So if they want to know the total current that comes out of the battery here, right? You say, well, gosh, you know that total current, when it gets to here, it splits into three and three. I must have had six volts down in that part of, uh, what did I just say? Six volts? I'm sorry. Uh, six amps flowing here, right? That are going to, at this point, they're going to split and three amps this way, three amps this way, but it's a total of six. And I could go ahead, I could mark that here in these spaces. We know that I've got six amps going out of the battery. When it gets to this junction here, that's what you call it, it's a junction or a node where the wire splits, I could have three amps going that way and three amps going that way. Coming around the top, three amps comes in the left side of this uh, resistor. And then whatever charge flows in has to flow out the other side. And so it's going to be another three amps there. Three amps flows down. And now it's going to combine here. Now look, three amps went to the right here, yeah? And resistors don't change the amount of current. Whatever goes in one side has to come out the other. So I've got three amps coming in that way. Three amps, three amps gives you a total of six amps. And that's the problem. Which takes us to these. It says, cross out the circuit below that's not equivalent to the circuit above. Well, what was the circuit above? I had two resistors. And I had the same delta V for both. We're going from high V to low V. My, my charges flowing have a choice of which one they're going to go through. Once they get to the right side, they're going to go ahead and that current is going to flow, uh, going to go ahead and flow together. So we said, uh, we just figured out that there's three amps here and that there was three amps here. And so if I got three flowing in here, three flowing here, when I get to this junction, they're going to combine together to give me six amps of current. 
that runs down through my bulb or through my battery, which is actually pretty handy because what's the current that go, went out the other side? Oh, six amps. Again, current in equals current out. All right. <clears throat> so I need um, to have a circuit that's which one of these is not equivalent. So uh, current comes out, has a choice of two paths to get down to the low side. Let's check it out. Color coding these. You say, hey, this first first one, I can see I've got my high V side. All of this is at the same V level, right? It's all conductor connected to that. Now we're going to lose energy going through this resistor or this resistor. And you say, well, the other side, though, Here's my low V side. All of this is all conductor connected together. Uh, until I hit something that changes the V level, you say it like a resistor. And so that's it. Now look, here's what's happening. The current comes out of the battery and it has a choice to get from red to, to sorry, purple down to red, going through the top branch or the bottom branch. Either one works and then combine it back again. And you say, yeah, I can see this one is in fact identical to this one, right? Current comes out, has a choice of two paths to, uh, Get uh, from uh, one side to the other side. Okay, what about this one? Again, we can do our color coding. High V side of the battery, right? It's all one piece of metal, all connected, right? Low V side of the battery. Right? Well, look, current comes out of the battery and it has a choice of going through to get from purple to red, of going through this guy or going through this guy. This is just the same thing. It looks a little different, but it really is the exact same circuit. Current comes out, has a choice of two paths. Each one takes it through a different resistor, gets back to the start. What about this one? <clears throat> well, again, if I color code, then I can see here's my high V side which is going to be everything to here. And then you say, what about my low V side? You say, well, all of this that I'm shading in red is at the low V side. You say, look, it's purple to red. And again, charges coming in have a choice of going through the one resistor or the other resistor to get to red. This one works just fine, which means by process of illumination, circuit D must be different, right? But pretend that you didn't know that. Let's just think through it. You say, mark my high V side, follow my current around. Look, when it gets to here, it has a choice. Maybe some of it goes to here. Now wait, these are connected. So it's all one purple level there, right? And then this is connected. So it comes up here, comes over. Wait, that's all purple too, right? Low V side of my battery. Say, here's my low V side. So here's what we have here. Current comes out of the battery. And then it has a choice of going through, like say to get to this point as a choice of going through this branch that has no resistance or taking kind of the long route running around this way. And you say, it's going to take the shortcut. Will some of them take the long cut? Well, long cut? Uh, well, no, because we know that there's no current going that way because if I were to hook up a voltmeter over here and I connect to either side of that resistor, right? You say, well, the delta V is zero. They're both purple to purple. You say, well, there's no reason to run through, uh, force my through this resistor, just end up back where I started, right? The same V level. You say delta V is zero. And that means the current through there is zero. Right. And that's what's going on there. So this circuit, this, this line going across the middle provided a shortcut to get to here, right? So my current comes out of the battery and then you can just take the shortcut and bypass this guy. This guy effectively is not in the circuit at all. It's like it doesn't exist. This circuit is different than the other ones. Here we go. We're going to consider this parallel circuit on the right. You say, okay, let's, uh, let's color code this business. 
Again, I like to make my high V uh, purple, right? Oops, how about a purple highlighter? That would be even better. Uh, so here we go. Highlight in purple. Okay, low V side, highlight in red. And so all of this is one big chunk of conductor all connected together. So it's all one V low. We say, look, six volts from red to purple, purple down to red, six, down six, down six. These are all going to be six volts across each resistor because we are all in parallel and parallel branches have the same potential difference because they connect the same two points, basically. Uh, what's the current in each branch uh, figured out? You say, well, I'm going to use Ohm's law. I'm going to use delta V is IR. And you say, well, the delta V for all the branches is 6 volts. And if I look at just the top branch, that's 6 volts through 2 ohms. And if I go ahead and um, do my calculations, I can find the current through each branch. So you say 6 volt through delta V is R, 6 volts through resistance of 2. And I can see the current there is going to be 3 amps. This is an identical setup down here. You see same delta V, same resistance, going to have the same current. Right? I don't know why I'm marking it like that. I'm marking currents, aren't I? Sorry about that. Let's do it in blue. Sorry. So the current flowing through this guy, 3 amps. The current flowing through this guy. But this one, this bottom branch, has a different resistance. And so doing my calculation for the bottom branch, you say delta V, 6 volts, is my current times my resistance. And so it's going to be my delta V times my resistance of 1. So this has to be 6 amps, right? And so that's the, uh, the current through that guy. So the top ones have 3 amps, 3 amps, and then this little one, little resistor here, is going to get 6 amps. You say, hey, look, the branch that has the smaller resistance gets more current. Oh, look, it's a 2 to 1 ratio here of sizes, and so it's a 1 to 2 ratio of currents. And that's it. So I get 6, uh, so my branches are 3 amps, 3 amps, 6 amps. The current through the batteries is some of the currents. You say, yeah, my charges in this case, they're going to uh, flow out of the battery. And then when they get here, they split up, right? Some go this way, some of the current goes this way, some of the current goes all the way around. And then we're going to recombine them. But that would be um, adding up 3 amps and 3 amps and 6 amps, uh, joining up in these wires. So my total current coming back is 3 and 3 and 12, right? I mean, uh, 3 and 3 and 6. You say that would be 12 amps. What's the equivalent resistance of the circuit? This, What this is asking of the whole circuit, what's the resistance of this whole mess? And so I have three resistors in parallel. And so I would use my parallel formula. And I would say 1 over our parallel is equal to the sum of the inverses of the individual resistances. And so, uh, in this case, I would get 1 over our parallel is going to be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus uh, 1 over 1. And if you do that, you say a half and a half is 1, and, and a 1 over 1 is another 1. So this is just going to be 2. And you say, but that's not the answer. That's just 1 over the parallel uh, total is 2. And so you say, I need to take the inverse uh, reciprocal of both sides, flip both sides, and I would get that our parallel is 1 half.
And so we say, hey, if I take, uh, so you say, that's a half an ohm. You say, wait a minute, a half an ohm? How can the resistance of the circuit be half an ohm? Each one of those individual resistors that went into it was bigger than a half an ohm. They were and a lot bigger. This was one, I had one that was one ohm. I had one that was two ohms and one that was two ohms. How, when I put them together, do I get an equivalent resistance of just a half an ohm? Well, here's the thing. If I just had the one ohm resistor, you say it would be difficult for charges to get through it, right? What happens when I, if I added on then another branch with two ohms? You say, well, that has more resistance than this branch did, but it's still going to take some of the current uh, will be drawn off to go through that two ohm branch. And so um, you say, do the electrons want to jam together to get through this little wire in that resistor? You say, no, the electrons repel each other. They're all negative. They don't want to jam together. And so it's difficult to get them through that. When I open another branch, even if this branch is harder to get through than this one, isn't it going to kind of draw some of the current off that way? And so not as much goes in. You know what I mean? It's going to make it easier. Um, so... It's going to be easier for circuit charges to get through the circuit. Some of them can take the other path, and that overall makes it easier to get through. So it's a weird thing, but when you add more branches in parallel, the resistance of the whole circuit, that equivalent resistance, actually gets smaller. Because you're making it so the electrons don't have to jam together so much. Um, so that's the deal. <clears throat> Moving on. Uh, there's this section here which says uh, we're doing actually power calculations here. Um, I think this is something to come back to um, a little bit later, right? And do the calculations for power. What I wanted to do in this one, compound circuits, this is looking starting to look at mixing bits in parallel and bits in series with each other. Uh, I'm gonna do a nicer job talking through it with uh, these next documents. So I'm gonna cut this video here and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at circuit analysis, uh, these documents I wrote uh, for thinking about kind of how to solve trickier circuit problems.